We're going to continue with Unit 3 to discuss interdependence, which means how organisms interact with other things in their environment. Today's lesson will focus on habitats, niche, which some people pro pronounce as niche also, and competition. To start, let's talk about what an ecosystem is. An ecosystem includes all abiotic and biotic factors in one particular environment. There are two new vocabulary words within that definition, so let's break them down. When you see the prefix bio in the word biology, or biotic, it means life. So biotic factors of the environment include all living things living in that area. An example of biotic factors in the environment would include organisms like humans. Another biotic factor would include this cow or any other type of animal like dogs, coyotes, fish, or birds. Trees are examples of biotic factors as well as other producers like grass, flowers, or fruits. This mushroom is a living thing, so fungi are examples of biotic factors, along with other decomposers like bacteria. Now that we've discussed biotic factors, let's discuss abiotic factors. The prefix a in abiotic means not or without, so abiotic means non-living things. Living things are dependent on non-living things like temperature. How cold or how hot it is, the weather and climate can affect organisms and are examples of abiotic factors. Another important abiotic factor in an ecosystem would be water. Organisms need water to survive, so the amount of water there is or how clean the water is can affect organisms. Living things also depend on energy sources like the sun. Plants need it for photosynthesis and everything needs it for heat. Because it's not a living thing, it's an abiotic factor. The last example I'll discuss is soil. It is a non-living thing, but plants need nutrients within the soil for its own growth and development. Now that we've discussed what an ecosystem is, let's focus on a habitat. A habitat is the actual location where the organism lives, including all abiotic and biotic factors within it. So when you think of a habitat, think of where an organism lives. A niche is different from a habitat. A niche is the organism's role or job within its habitat. This includes the way it gets what it needs to survive and reproduce, like how it gets its food, how it gets away from predators, or how it reproduces. So when you think of a niche, think of how an organism lives in its habitat. Now that you know the differences, let's take a look at your habitat and your niche as a teenager. Your habitat or where you live may include your bedroom, your house, or maybe you live in an apartment, or even the city you live in like Newark, Irvington, Bloomfield, or East Orange. Your niche or role as a teenager living within your habitat may include some chores like doing the laundry, cleaning your room, or maybe even cooking dinner for the family. Maybe you have siblings that you need to take care of, so a responsibility you may have is to drop them off or pick them up from school. And of course, the most important job you should focus on right now is doing well in school. So when you're having trouble remembering the difference between a habitat and a niche, remember that a habitat is where the organism lives and a niche is how the organism lives in its habitat. Let's take a look at another organism to distinguish the difference between its habitat and its niche. Here is a red squirrel. The red squirrel lives mostly in northern Europe and Siberia. It lives in woodland areas or forests. 
Its niche, or how it lives within its habitat, includes being able to climb and leap between trees to get food or get away from its predators. Its niche also includes what it eats like seeds, nuts, and berries. And also it includes its predators like foxes, owls, and wild cats. Each species has its own specific and unique niche, but competition does occur. Organisms compete for resources like food, mates, territory, and leadership. When organisms of the same species compete with each other, it is called intraspecific competition. For example, a pride or pack of lions can compete with another pride for food or lions fight each other to be the head of the pride. To remember this, know that intranational means within one nation, so intraspecific competition involves one species. When different species compete with one another, it is called interspecific competition. To remember this, know that international means between lots of different nations. So interspecific competition is a competition between lots of different species. Let's take a look back at the red squirrel to see an example of interspecific competition. Earlier we discussed its habitat. It lives in northern Europe. One nation it lives in is Britain. In Britain, the red squirrel's population has been declining due to diseases carried by other organisms, deforestation, which is cutting of trees in order to use them to make products or clear space, and competition. This is the gray squirrel. The squirrel should look familiar to you since it lives in North America. It was brought to Britain by humans and started to take over. It competed with the red squirrel for resources like food and territory. Now, even though both organisms are squirrels, they are different species of squirrels, so they are displaying interspecific competition. And in any competition, the stronger one will win. This map shows Britain in the years 1945, 2000, and 2010. The red areas uh, represent where red squirrels lived and the gray areas represent where the gray squirrels lived in Britain. What trend do you see? Who won this competition? As you can see in the maps, the gray squirrels occupied the southern part of Britain in 1945 and then started to invade other parts of Britain in later years. Each species will have its own unique niche. Pause this video and follow the links to see examples of this. The competitive exclusion principle states that no two species can occupy the same niche in the same habitat for a long period of time. Two species can't occupy the same exact niche for a very long time because competition between those two species will produce either a winner or a loser. And the loser will either be forced to move or eventually dies out.
To summarize, an ecosystem is an area including abiotic and biotic factors. Remember, bio means living or life. So biotic factors are the living things within that area. And a means not or without. So abiotic factors are the non-living things of that area. A habitat is where an organism lives, while a niche is how an organism lives in that area. And remember the most important thing, each species has its own unique niche. Two species cannot occupy the same niche for very long.